Senator, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, the spending is what's driving this up. We've got a money supply that's gone through the roof. We've never, never seen anything like this in this country, and yet and still there's more spending on the drawing board. What, did you, what are you saying about it? Well, when you have $6 trillion suggested to be spent and $2 trillion of it already going out to the economy, uh, this is going to feed the fires of inflation and just listening to your program, long lines, people fighting at the, uh, at the uh, pumps uh, to get in. And then you've got uh, prospect of 5% uh, inflation now. I remember 17% inflation and long lines and, and uh, Israel being in trouble in the Carter years and we don't want to go back to the Carter years. We got to look forward. And in my 13 county meetings that I had last week when the Senate wasn't in session, uh, I heard all about this problem of in inflation. And, uh, you know, uh, lumber going up so the price of a house is 36,000 more. It's very bad and hopefully the last four trillion of this, except for uh, infrastructure, uh, which would be just a few hundred billion, and everybody, right. there's a bipartisan agreement on infrastructure, we ought to be able to uh, eliminate most of this other uh, inflation of, uh, things. And we're going to be uh, uh, fighting inflation in this election just like it was when I was first elected to Congress in the middle 70s. Uh, I was an inflation fighter in my campaign and it took six years to get it under control. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's the, a big worry is that you can't control it. That's what Wall Street was saying today with that massive sell-off. No one can come to the rescue once it gets out of hand. And, and, and one point I would like to make, and I'd and I like you to underscore why it's so important. Isn't this the ultimate tax on the middle class and on poor Americans? Yes. I remember uh, senators from my state of Iowa in the 1970s talking about 2% inflation was just like a 2% sales tax on everything you buy. So you're absolutely right. And who pays it? Uh, and in proportion to income, obviously low income people more, but it's also a tax on the middle class. This fuel shortage, this fuel crisis, uh, we already saw prices at the pump going up already before this hack. Now they're going to go up even more. Talk about the impact of that because that was sort of central to the 1970s stagflation and that real period of misery that hit every American. That was a really down period for our country. Well, it was, uh, it, it, it just was out of control. Uh, you know, uh, people had to pay 22 percent taxes if you were a car dealer on their floor, floor plan as an absolute. I said 22 percent taxes. I meant 22 percent inflation on their floor plan as just one example. And, uh, and uh, it increased unemployment, et cetera. I don't know what more I can say is uh, we, we had a cent or we had a decade of less than 2 percent inflation. And, and look at how good the economy came just pre-pandemic, yeah. the lowest unemployment yeah. rate in, for 50 years. And also income inequality was lowered. And the uh, unemployment rate for African Americans, for Hispanic, and for uh, Asian Americans was historically low. And when you have a good thing like that going for you, you shouldn't screw it up with spending $6 trillion in the uh, first 100 days of a new presidency. Yeah, no, we, the blueprint was there to your point. It played out amazingly. We saw things that economists told us could never happen again. I want to switch gears for a moment, though, and ask about the vote today with uh, Liz Cheney uh, out of uh, the House, your, your colleagues in the House. She's no longer in leadership. Uh, just what do you make of it? Because the media is sort of saying that the GOP is in extreme turmoil right now and not sure which direction it's going in. Well, first of all, when you say the, the party is in turmoil, it's only in Washington, D.C. Uh, we've got 50 different state parties, and these state parties, and, and remember, we got a party from the grassroots up, not from the top down. 
uh, they aren't worried about this. And there's nothing illegitimate about your question, but just again, referring to my 13 meetings in 13 different counties uh, last week in Iowa, this issue didn't come up once. My people are worried about inflation, uh, not being able to hire people because of the high unemployment compensation that the federal government has put out there and things like that. Senator, what are your, your, your colleagues on the other side of the aisle saying when you bring these things up? Certainly we saw a knee-jerk reaction from the Biden administration to say, no, we're not paying people to work from home. That's not a problem. When now even liberal economists, uh, anyone from a Larry Summers to Jason Furman, so many others are saying, yeah, uh, this is hurting. We are putting too much money in the economy and we are paying people not to work. And uh, in, in the latter part of your comment, well, states, Montana, Idaho, South Carolina, and more recently, Iowa and Mississippi have cut out the federal add-on to state unemployment. If you're still unemployed, you can get unemployment compensation, but we aren't sure. going to subsidize you to stay home uh, so you can make more sitting at home than working. Uh, my, uh, my colleagues, if you're asking, uh, that's your question, uh, what you hear this, the needs are so great. The needs are so great. And the only way you can solve these needs is you got to borrow money and pour it out of the federal treasury. That's okay when the federal government uh, 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 put the economy down March of, of uh, 2002 and we got it up running again. But you don't have to continue that after the economy's up. Okay. Senator Grassley, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Let's go to